Hello, thank you, Lucia, for for actually working with you. It's not really a, 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 such a hard work. I mean, despite the efforts, but it's a pleasure. And uh, thank you, everyone, for being here. Um, well, when I had to choose a title for today's short presentation, I just uh, remembered. Um, Uh, John Berger, uh, Opus Magna, you might know, uh, the trilogy Into the Labors, uh, in which he looks, uh, well, actually took him like uh, 25 years to write, uh, he looks at the evolution uh, of peasantry in Europe, how it was uh, subject to the transformations in economy and uh, all the politics and how the people from Savoy in France, uh, the characters, are going uh, through this process, as I said, of, uh, of sometime, somehow displacement and dispossession into, uh, into, into the, the forces of the growing industrial proletariat in the time. But I think that uh, Berger himself is an interesting character because he embodies this idea of uh, engaged intellectual or cultural producer that has himself this pendular existence uh, between the urban, the academic, the enlightened intelligentsia, which somehow we all belong to, and we can enjoy from this uh, endorsed form of authorized knowledge we possess, uh, and the other uh, existence of the land producer, the peasant. Uh, he himself questioned how Marxism was looking also as peasantry as a some sort of um, backward, um, short-minded subject that had to evolve into a high-productivity farm worker. So. I invited him to the Inland First Conference we had uh, in Madrid, the Nasofia Museum. This is him in his farm. He couldn't travel at the time. Uh, and actually in his studio, uh, there is, this was this beautiful testimony of being in between, no? the reality of the cultural producer and the land producer. Um, he nevertheless sent a, sent a text. Uh, it was titled, A Sketch for an Ethical Portrait of a Peasant. Uh, written together with his son, Yves Berger. And I think that they were looking from that, as I said, uh, in betweenness, no? between the rural and the urban, uh, to this figure that could be our last other, in the sense that we sometimes romantize, we sometimes, as I said, uh, dismiss. But uh, uh, of course, he understood very well the processes that peasant, peasantry has been going through. This is an image actually of the Council of, uh, of Shepherds I work with in the north of Spain and well, mostly men and also age is part of the demographics in Europe. We have 65 years old average for a farmer and uh, as well as a masculinized uh, sector. But uh, the text himself I wanted to share with you was written by Eve, as I said, and here is himself painting in a, in a, in a dairy stable. So, the peasant is a guardian. His life is a reply not to the question, what will you leave behind you, but to the question, what did you save or preserve? Life is essentially effort interspersed with moments during which one recovers one's breath. There's no way out before the last breath. Work is a permanent horizon. The hardness of work is for the peasant a clean complaint. The non-recognition of his work is an open septic wound. One loves one's work as one loves a mother, a possessive mother whom one recognizes as both hard and beautiful. Whilst moving mountains, certain questions come up and others don't. A peasant's questions are not those of an intellectual, but both can join each other in sleep. The peasant submits to a life of labor and thereby, thereby there finds his freedom. With a constant dignity, he's the slave of his own task. A peasant actions are manual, their purpose is human. The question of choice for a peasant is a matter of composition. He belongs to the landscape. To say, I'm alive, he says, there's bread on the table. Um, I actually started to think on how my own practice is very much informed by the notion of the artist at work, in the sense that when I was 18 years old in uh, studying a uh, university, uh, in fine arts, uh, I was constantly asked by the teacher and the sculpture teacher, what are you going to do with that rock? I want you to sweep your shirt, you know, like in the sense of, uh, uh, yeah, work hard for, uh, to make a sculpture. And 
I refused. Uh, this is an image of a telegram sent by Francesco Matarrese in year 73, uh, refusing to take part in an exhibition uh, organized in Rome at the time. Um, but nevertheless, I found that there was a beauty to pursue and that the material was there. It was the, it's, it was not that I, refu I was refusing in order to just have more leisure necessarily in the sense of empty time, but in the pursuit of some activity that had meaning. No? So at the moment, uh, I started a cooperative with squatted land around the city of Madrid. And that was uh, one of an initial experiences for me to understand that this sort of uh, social arrangement of different uh, needs and different um, uh, uh, flows of energy and material and creating a system that could sustain that my, uh, myself, actually, because it was uh, a work that could sustain me, but also was uh, offering a space for the people in the city to reconnect with uh, social as well as uh, food processes um, was something I wanted to explore further. So yeah, the pictures are a bit blurry and it seems uh, that they are older than they are actually the year 99, so old. But uh, I was also uh, making this diagram, I don't know if it makes any sense, let me see. Can you help, can you help me for a quick year? But, uh, well, basically, uh, I think that we are living in a moment in which apparently uh, there is a more, um, how to say, there is a, there is a um, disap disappearance of the particularities of peasant culture of those who are in co-evolution with the land. And it's like sort of a urban continuum. So urban culture is the same than uh, country co uh, culture. But at the, at the end, now we are living a moment of increasing separation. Uh, and I think that the, the post fordist cognitariat, what would be the, the cultural worker or the artist, is referring to work uh, as different as the land worker, the peasant, in terms of how we value work. No? So for the person working in the land, uh, the work has to be, um, there has to be an effort, there has to be an effect, a transformation. No? Um, we very often end up with a sort of a conceptual elaboration. The relation with the biosphere through the body as an interface is, in our case, very much in the noosphere or in the digital, as well as uh, the levels of satisfaction. In this moment, I see that both worlds, the, the, as I said, the cultural worker, the land worker, are just part of a readjustment of economy that renders them uh, more and more vulnerable, more and more uh, subject to a process of concentration and a growing inequality. You know? There will be few big galleries, few mm, big artists that make it. There will be few less, uh, uh, less farmers and there will be just a bigger one. If we look at what would be, we're researching in inland on different scenarios uh, of modern uh, landscapes. If we look what will be Brex uh, UK countryside after Brexit, we'll see that it's a heavy subsidized sector, uh, about, about uh, 3.1 billion a year. And there is only 150,000 farmers in this country, but they manage 75% of the land. 7% uh, of the farms produce 55% of the, of the production. This, these farms will be the ones that will profit from technification. So uh, we'll talk now in a second about this, no? the, the vision of the, this sort of uh, highly productive countryside that will have to double production in order to feed uh, double population in 2020, uh, like 9 billion people in the world. Nevertheless, there is also a smaller, less productive ones, and actually it's one fifth, uh, what half of the country farms. And, um, and the, the, the farmers are facing continuous losses. No? As you can see, an average loss is 9,500 pounds uh, in profit very often with uh, the other actors in the, in the industry, in the, in the chain, no? so supermarkets and so on. Uh, Robotics, as I was saying, is uh, the big next thing in the, in the uh, competitive in farm sector. And uh, they will be growing from 30,000 to 6 million units in six years, which is quite a lot. And you can see a little bit of the areas where they are, where they are being uh, uh, developed. Well, you have to picture that it's not only about multi-spectral recognition through drones, but it's also uh, machines that, uh, I don't know how this, uh, place anyway, machines that are actually funnily still uh, uh, designed today as retromodern, but well, it's, they are the first stages. This is the Vino boat. It's cap uh, 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 capable of even analyzing the content of the grape before harvesting in order to get the best better wine. And these new agrobots are not just, as I said, analyzing, uh, trying to use expanded uh, sensors to understand uh, 
where, how to manage all this data and where, where is the maximum productivity. But uh, yeah, they just are starting to take, um, yeah, to take over no, production. So for example, the, the dairy bot, it's uh, smelling the breath of the cow. So it's a kind of a, a situation in which the cow tries to smell what is carrying her, and then is the machine smelling the breath of the cow to understand the production. And the, this is the first, uh, actually, uh, one hectare made without humans has been done successfully here in the, in the UK. Mm. Can we play this video for a moment? I don't know how to do it. It's maybe too, not so robotic yet. Oops. Well, uh, I was going to say that in this video, this is, um, this is uh, an exam from, um, from the Shepherd School. We started in 2004. And uh, oh, thank you. I think you have to yeah, play it there first. Uh, can you play the sound? Oh. So in this case, the pastoralists are the part of the people living in the land who are less industrialized and who are not focused by this uh, new agri-tech revolution because they are in places where industrialization is not possible, usually mountains and desert areas. And they are using also other interfaces, other forms of uh, expanding human agency. In this case, uh, it's the the, the, the relation, interspecies relation with the shepherd dog that the shepherd just ordered to move the flock in that, uh, in that way. Um, and um, not only in mountain areas, uh, but in many other areas of the planet, uh, shepherds are reacting. So this is inland member, Nel Cañedo, and he's a young shepherd coming from Shepherd School, mountains of Spain, and he's starting to produce videos that actually had like around 100,000 views. So he's becoming a successful viral shepherd or YouTuber, and therefore a cultural producer and a producer of ideology. He's uh, complaining about how uh, the situation is bringing them apart. Now, this is the project we're doing with Kito Steriel in the mountains about a reality show with him. And uh, can you play this one? Uh, well, basically uh, what I find interesting is that there is a whole use of uh, what internet allows, no, up in the mountains, this is in the hut, just for uh, a way to communicate and to bring together what is left from uh, this, uh, this uh, specific constituency. We have to understand, in this case, he's um, showing some uh, kind of a very graphic uh, dismissal of the national park. Uh, I had this project, the chance to run a space in Fries, London, with uh, Grace de Arts, a, a place I owe very much to. And we were just proposing uh, the Angry Farmer Milk uh, Bar with a leader from the Welsh uh, Dairy Union. Uh, that was the, 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 the peak moment of the crisis of, of the milk sector. And here are two images. In one hand, a pastoralist from the mountains protesting against a national park that has been 100 years, uh, according to their banner, occupying and submitting, uh, as well as a protest of indigenous peoples, the Cahuescar in southern Chile. You see few people trying their best. Uh, and this is, well, this is, uh, the question here is that um, the, the, yeah, the, um, the capacities of, uh, of um, very dispersed and uh, um, atomized sector, as would be the arts, the, art, the, the artist workers, the art workers and the land workers, is hard to, um, to, to condensate and to, uh, show a, a, a force. No? Uh, the Wadabe people uh, in Sahel, they are showing us very interesting forms of herding cows. They adapt themselves to the av uh, available pastures in a context of increasing uncertainty with climate change, and they are able to follow the, the herds. No? So in, in, some, in some way, they are being herded by the, by the cows. Uh, the Wadabe and the European pastoralists come together in a project that was the World Gathering of Nomadic Peoples, I organized in 2007, and this structure is bringing these different uh, realities from these many different places, building up also a movement, a European movement of shepherds that is able to be present at UN level or in other cultural uh, spaces. And uh, it's able to carry on this negantropic effort of committing to an organization. So this graphic shows the govern governance agreement of the gathering of the Alliance of Nomadic Peoples, 300 people uh, like uh, organizing themselves. 
So this is part of Inland, and Inland is a project of our institution, a state within the state, we can say, and it's uh, trying to create a space for uh, land workers to meet cultural workers or producers, producing knowledge, producing cheese, or running uh, different projects in different places, apart from the Shepherd School, and now we are training also what we can think can be the artists of the future that is no longer in a sort of a, a mono, monologue or tautological monologue within the art system, but also is looking at this pot potential alliance with the others that are uh, cultivating bounds uh, with the ecosystem and uh, with uh, whoever wants to join. So thank you so much.